name is Rob Robinson. I build guitars here at Iconic. Mostly I do all the fretwork and assembly, but the fretwork includes sanding the necks after frets, doing some minor inlay work. Assembly from start to finish, uh, including cleaning up the body, prepping it for assembly, um, buffing paint on bodies. I do the wiring, do setups, some quality control at the end also. So when I get a neck, the first thing I do is straighten it as best as possible, and then I have to remove the milling marks from the CNC machine. Depending on the type of neck that I'm fretting, I will either use a radius block to sand a consistent radius, or in the case of this neck, which has a compound radius, I have to use a long paddle to sand the machine marks out. The problem with the compound radius neck is the shape of the fingerboard is actually conical, so there's no way to use a sanding block to get that perfectly straight. You have to use a paddle, sand in long straight lines, and try to remove the milling marks as best as possible that way. After I sand, I will use my straight edge to either verify that I haven't created any dips or I use it to focus on areas that need to be brought down to make them be level. Sometimes when we get a neck, they are machined straight on the CNC machine, but after they sit for a couple days, they absorb moisture or they lose moisture and the neck moves. So basically, we try to straighten them before we install the frets. After I get the fingerboard level, I use a fret slot cleaning tool. It's basically a thin metal hook. What happens is in the machining process, a lot of times we'll get sawdust that gets built up in there. And if you don't get it all the way out, there's not enough gap between the fret and the bottom of the slot and the frets won't seat perfectly. So I have to make sure those slots are clean before I press them in. I have to bend the wire, especially on compound radius guitars. With nickel frets, it's not as big of a deal, but we do try to get it close so that the fret doesn't have to compress down too much. If you're doing stainless steel frets, it's important to get the radius exactly right for each space on the fingerboard. So this is a time-consuming process. It requires a lot of trial and error with this radius tool. I have to run the fret wire through the tool quite a bit for each slot, trying to either flatten it or, or over-radius it to try to match the spot that I'm putting it in. After I radius the fret, then I have to, on guitars that are bound and if they have a blind fret slot, you have to undercut the end of the fret so that it fits in that slot. After I press the frets in place, I use a fretting hammer to help tap the frets down. Sometimes it's difficult to get even pressure across the fretting call, so I have to tap each fret with the hammer to make sure it's fully seated. And I nip the fret ends, make them flush. I install a preliminary bevel to get it close before sanding. So once the neck has been sanded, we will come back and do a final bevel on the neck and also do a fret dress and a uh, polish before it goes to paint. Mm -hmm. 